Welcome back. This is ASMR Lizzie. Excuse my voice, it's a little early in the morning, so this may sound a bit different coming from me. I'm a little scratchy, a little hoarse. But it's nice and quiet, and I thought this is the perfect time to study and make a video. A very important exam coming up regarding bones and bony landmarks. It's a four-part test. The first part is knowing this terminology regarding bones and bony landmarks. These are different parts of the bone. The second part is knowing these terms. These are actually bony landmarks. You have to know the bone and memorize the bony landmark for each one of these bones. With the exception of a couple changes. I have to know those changes as well. My instructor added in the sacrum. The sacral the sacral foramen. Second part of the exam. I'll get a bone like this on a sheet of paper. With the line pointing to it. And there'll be another line, perhaps right here next to it. Instead of it saying that this is a posterior view of the right scapula, I'll have to write that in. This is the posterior view of the right scapula. And there'll be one line pointing to this, to one bony landmark. And I have to say, this is the posterior view of the right scapula. And this line is pointing to the superior angle. The third part, there's a skeleton, a replica of the human body in my room, my classroom. Well, there are several. And my instructor will point to a bone on the body and say, what is this bone? And then point to a bony landmark and say, what is this bony landmark? And I have to remember what bone it is and what bony landmarks pertain to that bone, and then what bone, or what bony landmark she is pointing to on the bone. The fourth part of the test is the part that makes me the most nervous, which is something I've been practicing with friends and family all weekend. I have to palpate a bony landmark and a bone on my instructor. Palpate is when you, you feel just feel around, okay, feel your phalange, okay, this is your thumb, oh, <laughs> this is your nail, so when you're feeling around, trying to locate something, and once you find it, so you have to find the bone, and then she'll say, find the joint, okay, here it is. There is one joint of the phalange on your index finger on your left hand. Or whatever the case may be. I don't actually have to find phalanges or any of the parts, but that's, I think, the roughest. Because you have to, she knows where you're supposed to be looking. And there's no definite. There's meat and <laughs> there's flesh, muscle, tendon, ligaments, skin, and some fatty cells in the way. So it's not just a clean, what is this? Okay. So. A small, knob-like process is a tubercle. A large, broad process.
a knob-like process larger than tubercle, a tuberosity. A narrow ridge of bone crest. Two angles joining together. Remus. Small, flattened surface of bone. Facet. Rounded process located at an articulation. Articulation, the first part, A R T A C, means related to joints. Oh, it's a condyle. I knew that one. <laughs> I didn't cheat. Cavity or hollow space within bone. A sinus. Now, like passageway, meatus, opening in bone or membrane for ramen. A furrow is a groove. A tiny pit or depression. Is a fovea. A shallow pit or depression is a fossa. Thorn like projection is a spine. Projection or outgrowth of bone is a process. And a projection of bone above a condyle is an epicondyle. Those are the easy ones, condyle and epicondyle. Okay, so let's go through these bones. In these terms clavicle shaft scapula medial vertebral border lateral axillary border inferior angle superior angle spine of scapula root of spine acromion process coracoid Humerus, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, intertubercular or bicipital groove, I'm calling it the bicipital groove, deltoid tuberosity, medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle, lateral supracondylar ridge, ulna, olecranon process, styloid process. Radius, styloid process, radial tuberosity, head of radius, vertebral column, spinous process, cervical transverse process, lamina groove, sternum, maneuverium, body, cyphoid process. I think she scratched that. I think I just need transverse process for the occiput which is the back of the head of the skull the superior nuchal line and the external occipital protuberance or I could just write inion which is a lot faster and easier to remember temporal bone external auditory meatus styloid process I need to know the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, mastoid process, 
the mandible, which is a separate bone, superior ramus of mandible. Ilium, I need to know the iliatic crest, ASIS, and the PSIS. The ASIS is the anterior superior iliatic spine, and this is the posterior superior iliatic spine. The ischium, the ischial tuberosity, the pubis, the pubic symphysis, and crest of pubis. The ilium, the ischium, and the pubis make up the coxal bone your pelvic bone. And she added the sacrum. I need to know where the sacral foramen are. Femur. Greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, medial and lateral epicondyles, linea aspera. Tibia. Medial and lateral condyles, tibial tuberosity, medial malleolus, and crest. Fibula. I need to know where the head is and the lateral malleolus. The tarsus. I need to know where the calcaneus and the talus are.